Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight thanking you for another day, dear Lord, that we enjoyed your presence with us. Dear Lord, we ask that you continue that presence tonight through the gift of the Holy Spirit, lead and guide us, that we may do those things as pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board will review the minutes. Give it over to one. Move that the minutes be accepted as presented. Second. <clears throat> Motion is second. Approved minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Move on to item five. You'd like to introduce this to you? I certainly wouldn't. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you. Last year on doing Family Literacy Day, I brought you quite a bit of information. And since they only take the information on years of the census, it will be about uh, 2030 before we get a new set, but uh, they, it takes about two or three years to get all the, the information combined, so we still don't have it for a while. But I did want to remind you that literacy is the ability to read and write. It's the single most important factor in determining a person's career area. For those who can read and write, the range is possible for a very high skilled job. High careers are within reach. For those who cannot, the options are extremely limited. Even unskilled minimum wage jobs can be difficult to obtain. Uh, I wanted to let you know that the United States in the world is down in the 80 percentile. There's a bunch of them at 100, but I always have to remind people, in the United States, I believe we are about the only country that educates all people. So I'm very proud that we let everybody, or almost, in fact, want everybody to come to school because uh, staying home, they, they learn nothing, and so we want to get them in school. And some kids have been to a school for three years when they finally go through kindergarten graduation. So we are working and identifying the school district does a good job of early screening to find problems before they get too bad and get therapy and whatever needs to be done. So they do a good job of that. Uh, I wanted to let you know that Arkansas uh, is 32 out of 50, and the lower the, uh, the higher the number, the better off you are. And uh, Students not reading proficient right now is at 68%. But something else I wanted to let you know that I found while I was uh, looking about literacy on the internet, that the attention span has decreased in the last 20 years. And I don't know who did the study and how they were able to do it, but they say an adult's attention span is 8.25 seconds and a goldfish is nine seconds. Mm -hmm. So they are considering that we have lost our focus. And I go to Clinton Primary three days a week and listen to kids read. And I know if somebody comes out of a door or if somebody walks down the hall and they never seem to know where the teacher is. <laughs> and so I know why reading is a problem because they just cannot focus. 
And it's going to have to be like we told parents to regulate the number of hours that kids watch TV. We're going to have to regulate the parents to remind them that they don't need to be on those games all the time. They don't need to be on that uh, computer all the time doing things like that because there's so much going on. It, they do not have much of a focus. So, uh, uh, and I just want to remind you that it is, it takes a village to raise a child. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, really? Yeah, right, well, really. I thought she was hanging on. Whereas National Family Literacy Day established by the 103rd Congress in 1994, now mar marking the 30th anniversary on November 1st, 2024, highlights the importance of reading and learning for the entire family and emphasizes the impact that parents have on their child's learning. And whereas this day is celebrated across <coughs> America each year and focuses on special activities and events that showcase the importance of family literacy programs that empower families to build a nation of readers and whereas literacy programs across the united states will observe national family literacy day by holding readathons book drives workshops and family activities at schools libraries and community centers to encourage literacy and whereas many of us one in six adults struggle with reading and writing and by learning to read individuals can gain self-respect and confidence and strive for goals that otherwise would not be achievable and whereas the National Society of the Daughters, Daughters of the American Revolution is a nonprofit, nonpolitical, volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promotion, patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children and adults. And whereas education being one of the cornerstones of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, the City of Hope is committed to increasing literacy by promoting and supporting literacy programs. Now, therefore, I'm Don Steele, by virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Hope, Park, Hope Pimson County, Arkansas, proclaim November 1st, 2024 as National Family Literacy Day to underscore the importance of literacy, celebrate the joy of reading, encourage residents to promote literacy by reading together as a family, and to extend deep appreciation to our local librarians, educators, and literacy service providers for the tireless efforts to strengthen the literacy of our children and our community. Thank you, Randy. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of that. Okay, I'm six. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to make sure the board was aware we're not really asking the board to do anything tonight about this. We thought uh, it may be a good time tonight just to start a discussion on how the board may want to handle uh, bike lanes since now this is the first bike lanes are being put in our city. And so it's more of a policy discussion tonight than asking you to take any kind of action. Um, so as you know, 6th Street, uh, we're almost through with construction. We just haven't signed off on the final um, acceptance of the project due to we still have one problem that has to be addressed, and it's a sewage problem for the company board through a line and it's going out under the road and it was discovered uh, during our um, walkthroughs and so that's going to have to get corrected um, but basically the street is is basically done and we've started putting in our we've got our bike lanes in we're starting to put the bike lane emblems down you also are seeing that on 16th street as the street crews continue to to add um, uh, emblems uh, on all the bike lanes. So, you know, I think logically there's three possibilities. Either the board can say, hey, we're not going to do anything about bike lanes with respect to parking in a bike lane or obstructing a bike lane. Or you may take a middle of the road approach and say, hey, we're not going to prohibit it, but we're going to restrict it to certain times or days. And, or you may say, no, we want to prohibit such action. Uh, I would let you know that there is already an ordinance that you're not supposed to put your rubbish in the street. So we've already got an ordinance on that. So if a person puts their pine needle straws in the bike lane, or if they put their trash in the bike lane or a couch or whatever to be picked up, they're not supposed to do that by ordinance already. Uh, so we have at least a way to address that, to talk to them, ask them not to do that, and 
uh, could threaten some kind of um, a citation action if they, if they just, just refused. So that's addressed, but we don't have anything addressing parking in the bike lanes. I did ask the chief to review state law. There's nothing in the state law that prohibits it. Uh, state law does allow us to prohibit it, and we can do so by ordinance uh, if the board wants to. So I just thought in anticipation of these bike lanes and maybe people starting to call the police that, hey, there's cars parked on the bike lane and my kid can't ride their bike or I can't ride my bike. Instead of just, we wanted y'all to start thinking about this and do we need to do something or do we not? And I would just say if you do decide to take some kind of action, it would definitely be a low priority enforcement action. Uh, you know, we have X amount of police on the streets at a time. They answer about roughly 25 to 30 calls a day. Many of those are emergency calls. Much of those take much of their time. This would be a low priority enforcement. But nonetheless, uh, it could be enforced upon as they have time to enforce or we get a complaint and we have to address a complaint. So it still could be something we could, in, could enforce. So just thought I'd open that up to the board and maybe let y'all talk about it, hash it out, and maybe talk with Randy about his opinion. And, um, there. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> JR mentioned this to me. I think, uh, you know, we, we not doing action tonight, but I personally think we need to prohibit it in the sense of if we don't, somebody be parking there every day. I mean, I, I mean it'd, be a, it'd be somebody that um, they get in the habit of parking, uh, they'll just keep parking. And uh, it really looks nice the way it is, man. Make the street look, look nice and. Uh, <clears throat> this is my opinion, but you know, uh, I say we can all maybe get feedback from the public and see what uh, see how the public feels about it. Yeah, I think it's important to get um, probably those in um, those neighborhoods' opinion um, for the simple fact that on six on Sixth Street, especially, the, the, there's limited driveway and there are multiple vehicles, um, even in those even in those, uh, at those residents, and they're even parking on their grass. So if they have visitors, where are they gonna go other than to park on the street closest to the house, which would be mm -hmm. that bike lane. So I, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air on that. Chief, got a comment? Uh, just also to think about at about three o'clock or a little after uh, on school days, we have Hats has their uh, car line that wraps around there, and that's temporary. They're really just sitting there waiting for the kids to get out there, not there that long, but they are stopped in the bike line at that, at that point. Now, I'm told that, that that won't be an issue next year. I don't know if Hats is moving someplace else or what, but it's something else to think about. I guess I would say I would hope that we wouldn't encourage people to ride their bikes down a street that we would allow people to block because then I would think that this turns into something where we're going to have to be reactive when somebody swings into mm -hmm. traffic and is struck by a moving vehicle and then we have to do something to do this. I would hope we would be proactive and try to keep, keep those bike lanes open. If we're going to let people park there, then we should never have put them there. Um, if, if, if we need parking somewhere, we need to address parking, but I, I would feel really bad if we put bike lanes down and had to have people swerve and avoid vehicles until someone gets hit and then we decide we aren't going to allow parking in the bike lanes. So that, that's where I'm at. I'll open up your car door, like you said, it was on Judge Judy, exact same thing Dr. Sand. But that's always been an yeah. issue anyway, anyway with, yeah. with that with or without with the pipelines. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, that's why I'm kinda up in the air because there's not a lot, you know, you see you know, driving through there at night and I see or even during the daytime and I see the limited parking for the residents mm -hmm. of their houses. So then we put the burden on them to either expand their driveway expand their driveway. They're, we've already taken part of their yard for the bike lane, then we're asking them to incur the extra expense to expand their driveway for their, for their vehicles 
or for their visitors, then what, I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just up in the air with it. I don't know. If I may, yeah. Um, obviously there's some competing interests, right? Um, so that's a hard thing to discuss in, a, in the public forum, competing interests. Um, so some, I think some places kind of do take a middle of the road approach. So, okay, I won't prohibit it all the time, but maybe we'll prohibit it at some time. So uh, maybe an example is, hey, you, you cannot park in the bike lane until after a certain time of the day, eight o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, or something like that. Uh, the other issue may be about, hey, well, what if it's during those times and they have visitors? You know, of course, I, I used to live in a big city and that was a problem all the time. We just had to park where it was legal and walk. Um, and there is, there is places legally close to some of those homes where they could go off on a side street where parking's not limited and they could park there and then walk a few houses down to their, to their, where they're going to visit someone. And I noticed on uh, 6th Street, in my opinion, there's two houses that park regularly on the street, pretty regularly, that I think we'd have to address if y'all if y'all decide to go that option. I haven't really noticed any on 16th. I've never really noticed any cars parking on 16th. It's just really, we're talking about really two, two or three houses yeah. on 6th Street. And, you know, if we, if, if, if we go and explain ourselves or, and talk to them, like you said, maybe get their opinions, maybe, maybe we can... Uh, you know, work something out uh, that's, that helps y'all with those competing interests and those ideas uh, that you're trying to protect. Anything the board would do on that, also you need to consider uh, allowing law enforcement to police the actual riding into or driving into the bike lane when there's bikers present. So that, that could be some type of... That's a good point. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, some people consider the <clears throat> bike lane when they're driving, some don't. They're, yeah. you know, they, they wonder why it's there. And just to go with that point, I, we were looking in some magazines and some bigger cities that obviously have that, you know, cars may not see the bike. Some, sometimes they'll put down even traffic for yeah, they've got those prohibitive... Little, yeah, a little... Bending yeah, a little loads, raised up yeah. thing. So yeah. if you might damage like your what's car, in front of the state police exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll put those things down the road too. Um, of course, that's an expense. Yeah, I think we are probably a long way from that. <laughs> the, uh, but we'll table this and we'll uh, all uh, think about it till uh, the next meeting. Maybe revisit. And just kind of get a, a feel of the community. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, out of seven. budget to, in, in, and I discussed it with you guys, something called Plane Mover, it was a little device. Um, haven't purchased that yet. We have discussed it internally with uh, Austin and I, and most of our users, we feel they, they actually just manually move their plane with a little bar. And, uh, or the four-wheeler. <coughs> we have a couple bigger planes, so. <coughs> Um, so we feel that that might not be used as much as we had hoped it would be and we have a need for some other equipment out there. I've rented a lift, uh, one of those scissor lifts over the past five months to uh, do some work in the other hangers with an electrician. We've repaired both doors up there, the motors are both burned out. Um, we've done some, the windows are falling out out there and uh, you can't get up with on a ladder holding a piece of glass and it's, it's very unsafe um, and uh, we've done a couple other things so I explored um, purchasing a used lift and, and uh, with that same money um, and there's one in uh, Huggin Hall uh, the guys out at Alvarado they had two of them identical just turned in um, for some new ones and they've got one on hold for us that 
it's in uh, it's used, uh, but it's functioning, and that's a, it would allow us to maintain our windows, and that's the main and lights and stuff like that. That we just don't want to be on the ladder to do. So I'll just uh, request that we basically take that capital uh, outlay item and, and just kind of re reallocate those funds for it's still equipment for use out there, but it's just be for for uh, maintenance purposes. I got one question. Uh, does it come with a trailer? Yeah. No. I know trailer is high. I know our tech that one. But is there any other uses we could use it in the yeah. city? And we've used um, we use that tilt trailer for the street department. Um, usually we have to push it on the tractor. Um, they've gone and picked it, the one I leased, picked it up and returned it just um, last week. Um, and that, that is able to, to hold that with no problem. Okay. Um, the, the trailer that you're talking about are those specialized trailers that hydraulic, and that's all you can use those for, basically those. Yeah. And so if you're not moving it a whole bunch, you really don't need it. Those are very expensive trailers. That trailer would probably be as much as a lift. It would be. Okay. At least. But it can be moved yeah. if yeah. needed. It, and it's, it's, it, it is a hard surface only. It's like our forklift. You get off into the pea gravel and it gets stuck. So, you know, it's, it's mainly for just running around on concrete. So. Yeah. Have to get some special tires. So it's the same price as. Well, I told them I would, yes, for the $6,000 is what I was aiming for, and it would be a little bit of tax that they're going to deliver and all that. So. One thing about it, 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 it's the safety of it is, is worth it. Because if you working up high. Well, you can get two people up there. Right now, we've got to replace another motor, um, one of our two. We've got the motor there, and it's just two of us are going to have to. It's going to take two of us to wrestle the old one down and put the new one in. And, um, it's either that or have to go rent another one for $600 a month. Or like, they're like 250 a, a week or something like that. So, you know, it, it just adds up, and we, we just felt like you said we could use it maybe a few other places um, uh, it can be used for washing the outside of the building um, on the hard surface now on the grass we couldn't do it but there they basically store those things outside so they can get rained on and everything else so multiple use All right. any questions we don't have any motion do we I mean, it's, that amount of money is already in the budget. Uh, we had we specifically stated a plane that we were in the budget, so we just that's the only reason I brought it to you because we didn't want to not buy a plane movie <coughs> and when we told you we would. Uh, I don't know if it needs a motion or not, but if y'all just give us the go-ahead, we'll buy it. Motion to approve change in capital expenditure. Okay. Same thing. Motion to say. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. I'm going to ask Daniel to come up. We have a new benefit program that we're doing for our employees. And it was an administrative decision, but we wanted to make the board aware of it, uh, how it's going to work, and how we think it's going to help our employees. So, and Daniel's been doing the lion's share of this, so I'll let him explain it. Yeah. So, the company is JTS, they're out of Little Rock, and they have a long-standing relationship with Arkansas Municipal League. They are the executive broker for Municipal League health benefit products. Uh, they're a health benefit, benefit that we utilize within our city. Um, so I was setting up our benefits fair, and I learned of JTS, and contacted them, and, and they, at no expense to the city, we get their benefits due to our relationship with the uh, Arkansas Municipal League. So it doesn't cost us anything. And they will manage our cafeteria plan. And so we'll stay with Municipal League insurance, but all those supplemental insurances, the cancer riders and uh, medical transportation insurance and all those things, JTS will go out there, shop around for us, put a package together, a cafeteria plan for us, and then they'll put it all together in a book. This is an example from a different, uh, from Sherwood actually that they did. And so they'll give this to us ahead of time before the benefits fair. 
and distribute to our employees so they can they can look through here and say okay these are my options and when we get to the benefits fair they make an educated and informed decision on what policies they want to uh, take part in and it, as well as they they help manage the policies as well the enrollments and terminations changes uh, payroll de deductions they make sure that uh, we're, we're pulling the correct amount out of the paychecks and they'll do an annual review. Our life insurance policies for our employees are salary based. So every year we have to review that because if there's a COLA or any raise or salary changes that has to be reviewed and reflected in their life insurance. So they do all this for us. It takes a lot off of the staff and it's, you know, it gets a better product to our staff. The way it's been is uh, the benefits fair just kind of go in. There's tons of tables set up and it's kind of on the employee to go shop around and figure out this this kind of puts it all together in one consolidated package easy to shop for easy to see what you want what you need uh, and that's pretty much it hey Daniel would you explain that if they want to stay with a provider they're already using that's not offered by JTS sure how JTS helps them to stay with that provider sure so so JTS will put this cafeteria plan together this is what What's in this booklet will be what's eligible for payroll deduction. So if you have a Cigna plan right now, and Cigna is not chosen for 2025, it will no longer be payroll deductible. But that doesn't mean you have to get rid of your policy with Cigna. Uh, in fact, JTS says they will help us make the transition, and there are certain policies out there. They know that if you've had, like some of these cancer policies that are dated from 20 years ago, will pay for unlimited... Uh, services like uh, chemo or radiation like and so those are super valuable policies and so JTS will work with our employees and so they can maintain those the difference is it'll just be a private pay situation that relationship will be between the employee and that carrier but but we'll help them transition and identify those high value policies and how many cities, can you explain, board, how many cities in Arkansas use JTS? It's almost all of them. It, it's like almost 500. Uh, can you and explain then, why we haven't been using them? Yes. <laughs> uh, so JTS started working with City Hope 2022, and they actually built this book. I have an example on my computer. I don't have a printed copy. They built the book, uh, but Amber had a system in place that she knew and she was comfortable with and and I think for her it was just easier to maintain what was already existing so I didn't have none of that when I came in I have a system at all I just know what we have as far as we've got a list of employees and, and payroll deductions so when I started looking at this and I found out about JTS and I found out nearly all cities utilize JTS uh, this was a no-brainer for us I think we were all pretty excited Hope School District uses it, from what I understand, yes. and I think the county uses it as well. But that's a good question. Is there any percentage of is it going to be, it's going to be a better value for? Our, we yes, we should be. Any percentage? We should putting we will be putting forward better policies at better values for our employees. Right. Yes. I don't think we have an exact percentage. Right. But that's what JTS does. They get somehow they get paid by the. For that, for that. Policy providers, right, and they look for the the best policies at the best prices, and they they're large in this market, and they know this market pretty well, and they they try to pass us the best rates as possible. And and, and so too, if we had something we really wanted to push, uh, like we were talking about the the medical transportation, they they've got one that we're probably going to utilize called Mesa. And uh, somebody brought up, you know, well, we've got Paffer here and they have plans, you know, could we utilize that? And they're, they're absolutely on board with it. But upon looking at it, Paffer would only cover Paffer right here. So if we, if, you know, you were out in South Carolina or something and Paffer wasn't there, then that, that policy wouldn't be as valuable. So uh, we decided to go with the Mesa plan. And is, Mesa would still pay Paffer, right? It, absolutely. it still pays whatever yeah, provider. Yeah, wherever, whatever Thanks. provider, ground or air. And I think that one, for instance, I think it was $14 a month for your whole family. And that would cover 100% any medical transportation in, anywhere. You can have an accident anywhere. Yeah. Rather than in just the, at home. In the continental right. U.S., I think. Not right. overseas. Yeah, not overseas. But, uh, 
That's right. So, but they will, if we have, you know, if we find some, hey, this Affleck policy or Geico or not Geico, but Signo uh, or something like, we if we have a say in it. Mm -hmm. We have an option. We think when, a, when an employee walks into our benefit fair now, there will basically be one table, one shop table, and then we'll still have a city table set up to explain certain things we have to do as a city, uh, like catastrophic right. leave care. and. I'll be there and I'll take care of the catastrophic leave donations as the city's always done. Certain things will not be connected to JTS, like our uh, 457 plan, re exactly. deferred retirement. Um, the uh, police benevolent fund that's not connected to this at all and that only applies to police legal shield I, I don't know I, I, it may be in there and United Way donation United Way's coming and uh, so that's not relevant to this but we're still gonna payroll reduct United Way through the city's efforts we, yes. we discussed yes. that so Daniel's still gonna have the United Way cards, our local United Way. Mm -hmm. They'll still have a chance to give, we'll still payroll deduct that. It just JTS will have that payroll reduction. We'll do that with Cindy directly mm -hmm. through Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing uh, was, oh, the 457 plan. So this is something I don't think we've ever done a good job at educating our employees about our 457 plan. You know, we have APERS retirement or LOPFI retirement. But we also have another retirement leg that any employee can choose to do. And you can contribute to a 457 plan as part of our cafeteria plan. It is uh, where you can deduct payroll deduct and it goes to Mission Square that manages a portfolio of assets that you get to choose what you want to invest in. And instead of having to start off maybe at a minimum of $500 or whatever, if you went for the private company, there's no minimums. You can just say, I want to take $5 a week out of my check or $10 a week out of my check or $20. Whatever you decide you want to do and you want to put into that other retirement leg that's your money, it's not the state's retirement money, it's your 457 plan. And it would be there as a lump sum for you and your family when you retire. And so this is a, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to educate. We've had this for a long time. Mm -hmm. But it's typically not been, it's been underused, I think, my personal opinion. Five people. We got five people in the city using the 457 plan. Three are in here, I think. Yeah, and, and still, still everybody has to make their own decision. Uh, but but it is pre-tax. That's what I meant by cafeteria plan. Maybe that's incorrect way. But it's pre-tax. So if you want to give $10 a week, it may only cost you $8, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's pre-tax. And they're going to send somebody to our benefits fair this time. So we will have a booth for Mission Square, uh -huh. yep. which I think is new. That is new, and that's a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. We're excited about this. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to help our employees to know what we're offering. And, and two, and in this book they provide, it gives one place to kind of go to shop and they'll have all this information. <coughs> it even has like uh, the discounts and there's card, like discount cards and stuff that uh, Municipal Health Benefit offers that we didn't even know about. So, good. Good. All right. Any more questions? If not, we'll move to Cindy and Odd, it looks like. Miss Cindy, I think they'd like for you to speak to this. Oh, okay. um, this, this is just a resolution that we have to pass every year. Uh, and basically it's just saying that we're going to continue with a gap accounting and not regulatory um, accounting. Uh, the main difference um, in uh, the regulatory accounting is um, basically cash uh, is a cash basis and uh, the legislative audit dictates exactly how it has to be set up. Um, so it doesn't really give you a true picture of, of what has went on in that year because it's just, like I said, cash. So this is just something that we have to have every year um, so that we can continue with the way that we've been doing the accounting, which is the GAP, generally accepted accounting procedures. Randy, you want to Whereas the governmental accounting standards board issued statement number 34 and subsequent statements dramatically affecting the audit presentation of the city of Hope 
And whereas State of Arkansas Act 499 of 2005 provides for a municipal audit report to be presented on a regulatory basis in the county, and whereas State of Arkansas Act 499 of 2005 requires the governing body of the municipality to adopt a resolution in order for the city post independent auditors to follow the guidelines established by the governmental accounting standards board rather than those prescribed by the state of Arkansas. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city board of Hope, Arkansas, that the audit of the books and records of the city of Hope for the year 2023 is to be performed in accordance with the guidelines and format described by the governmental accounting standards board, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and the United States Government Accountability <coughs> Office. Passes 15th day of October 2024. All right. Turn to resolution. The motion to adopt. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, yes, I just want to remind you guys I'll be leaving this Friday to go to the ICP meeting in Boston and I'll be returning <coughs> the following Tuesday, so I'll be back to work on that Wednesday. Uh, I want to remind you too, obviously early voting starts October 21st and goes through November 4th, uh, election day being November 5th. Um, out at the airport, runway 1634 is open. Uh, we're through with the runway safety uh, grant uh, work that's being done on that runway, so we've got that completed. It's, it's not all closed out financially yet, but all the physical work has been completed. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that uh, we have also, Daryl has also completed the uh, fencing and safety grant. Uh, at the airport. That was an Arkansas Aeronautics grant from the state. That's all been completed and been uh, funded. We've got our money back from Arkansas Aeronautics. All we put in for it, we just haven't received it yet. <coughs> so we should be receiving some money soon to recover funds there. Uh, I wanted to propose to you guys as a potential date for your visiting around the city uh, potentially October 29th, primarily because I'll be on a plane that Tuesday, the next Tuesday, coming back to so the 29th would be the next Tuesday I'd be available. It is the fifth Tuesday in October. There's no board meeting that day. I don't know if that works for you guys, but if that does, that would be a good one for me. If that's not, we could push it into November, uh, and we could do that too. And I wanted to uh, also ask y'all to to decide, I know one year, some years we used the van or a bus from ROC. I remember uh, the last time we used it, we didn't have many people on it because a lot of a lot of board members sometimes were like, hey, I've got to leave, I've got to go, and I've got to be. So we had a bus, but only a few people on it. I didn't know if y'all wanted to try to do a bus again, or hey, you'll just take a couple of cars. That way if somebody had to have their own car, they could go. And um, You know, we got two, two nice pickup trucks, and. And maybe three cars would definitely get us there easy. We could do it that way, or we could put together the bus. And maybe y'all could think about that. And uh, do you still want to have a lunch, uh, luncheon somewhere, and meet with the department heads on their five-year plans and goals? We could set that up if that's what you want to do. So, okay. I, hmm. Yeah. Um, what the next two? Weeks are hard for me. I'm not going to probably be able to go, but um, November doesn't look any better because uh, fifth is election day, and then twelfth uh, is Veterans Day. Uh, or do most people here plan to vote early? Uh, do early voting? Or? I can do it fifth. If that's if that's all right, go. Brothers out of town. It's always. It's always. Just about always. November 5th? Don't know yet? I can make it work. I just have to be, I, I would need to be back to my office by one. Okay. And that's. I think we uh, we can work on the list, but definitely we go to the airport and in the hospital. 
East Plant. The East Plant. East Plant. I haven't been to East. I, been a while since we've been out to East Plant. I've never been there personally. Y'all want to start at eight o'clock and maybe try to wrap it up by to be at the luncheon at eleven, and then we can have a lunch get, and a discussion with department heads. You can make your maybe make it back to work by one. That'd be. That's fine by me. Eight to eleven, they give us three hours, almost an hour at each place, forty-five minutes in each place. Fifteen minute drive. Like that. Okay. That's great. Maybe it works for you guys. We're gonna do that for. We'll and I'll try to set that up at the Hope Room, but if we can't get it the Hope Room, we'll just we'll grab a room at the park or something of that nature. Is that okay? Yeah. I'll eat in the hospital. All right. Well, they may have a room there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anything else? Can we quit this room? Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? Uh, public comment? No. Anything from the board? Okay, y'all just be sure and, and uh, preach the four, five, six. I mean, we're down to the uh, final. Yeah. Y'all do have uh, y'all do have the financial statements you can take home with you and look at. If you have a question, give me or Cindy or Daniel a call. Thing on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday for the board I think uh, the next event is Daniel and some of us going to be at the football game. Football game Friday night. And next week, uh, oh, Civic Club. Civic Club. Wasn't there one other Tuesday and Wednesday nothing? No. How was the turnout last Thursday? It was really, really, really good. Really good. <laughs> That's me, yeah. Say yeah. 50, 50 people? Probably, yeah. 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 Positive yeah. all the way around. Just, just feel yeah. me. Now, if anybody has any time, we need to, I don't know if the am ambassadors, are they going to the soccer fields? Is that one I of their stops? so. I know Anna has been. Okay. If anybody has a chance, yeah. that's, a, that's a hot place in town right now. There's yeah. a lot of folks at soccer fields. Yeah. But if you could take, take an afternoon to go in there and visit with people about it. I believe Summer had uh, display boards up at... Uh, J.A. suffered tonight, Good. earlier today. Okay. Anything else? Trevor, you ready to go? I thought you were already doing something. I know. I thought you were already doing something. I thought you were already doing something.